Hello and welcome to News Click and Communalism Combat. Today we are going to talk about the new draft of a law called uh, Manav Suraksha Kanun. And to talk with us on the issue, we have Shaila Rashid, student and activist. She is also someone who has launched a national campaign against lynching. Thank welcome you. to our show. Thank you. So, um, what is the need for this new law? Uh, I'm glad you asked this question at the outset. Uh, one month back, uh, that is on 5th of June, uh, many of us got together, many youth got together and uh, we decided that uh, we have to have a law against mob lynching. And uh, this, uh, this need arose because lynching as a specific crime is not defined in Indian law. Now if we sort of go back to history and we look at people who are lynched or who um, or which identity is lynched. So we can go back to the US where lynching has been defined as a specific crime against the blacks uh, because there is a whole racial history to it. This would happen and people would be lynched and burnt um, and hung on trees or stuff like that would happen. Um, in India, uh, if you look at it, um, people belonging to vulnerable identities. Now this may be a transgender, hijda, this may be a mentally challenged woman, mentally challenged women are often sort of, they are branded as witches or even not just mentally challenged women, widows are often branded as witches. They are lynched so that their property can be confiscated. So all of this happens within a context of inequality and vulnerability. And that's why this certain spike that you see in Muslim, you know, lynchings of Muslim people, this is, there is a context to it. The context is that Narendra Modi government has come to power. And in 2014, when the Narendra Modi government came to power, days after that, you must have heard about the Mohsin Sheikh lynching case in Pune. I mean, he was targeted for nothing. I mean, he was just, he was having a beard, he had a Muslim identity, and he was just lynched on the street. And today, what is the status of the case? All the murderers are out on bail. And no lawyer wants to take up that case. Even the, even the public prosecutor has said in writing that he, need, he needs to be, he wants to be relieved from the case. So there is definitely government pressure on him. And why is there government pressure on a public prosecutor? Because these lynch mobs, they are, they are supported by the government. They are supported by the central government. And I don't mean this just as a rhetoric or a hyperbole. You have Union Minister Mahesh Sharma going to Dadri and paying homage to the lynching accused. Ravi Sisodia, who died in custody. Then you have a BJP MLA, uh, Gyande Vahuja, he says that he doesn't regret the, um, you know, the killing of Pehlu Khan and all of that. So you see, there is like, I mean, obviously, it's not like Narendra Modi will tweet and say that I support lynchings. He will not do that. But he will send enough signals to the whole system that we are on the side of the people who lynch. Now, the next obvious question comes, oh, can't Hindus be lynched? Yeah, of course they can be. If the law and order goes out of the window, then anyone can be lynched. So for the longest time, the lynchings of Dalits or the attacks on Dalits have been tolerated in this country. And that's why today we see that anyone can be lynched. It has been brought to that point. Now, if the if law and order, I mean, if the, this becomes a norm, tomorrow you can say, oh, you are wearing a short dress and I can lynch you. And lynching sort of, you know, represents uh, that you are taking the law into your own hands or in the case of, you know, say, let's just say the killings that have happened since Tadri. Um, there is another specific context, the beef laws. Huh? Now, who is supposed to enforce the beef law? Let's just say beef is banned. Let's just say chicken is banned. Let's just say India becomes a vegetarian country. Even then, who is in charge of enforcing those laws? Is it Bajrang Dal? Is it VHP? Is it RSS members? Or is it the police? Now, that's our point really. I mean, our point is that Whatever the state has to do with beef and cow and all of that, that's another question. We first need to talk about human beings being killed at will by vigilante mobs. That can't be tolerated. Now, the law that we are asking for, it recognizes all of this. It recognizes vulnerability of migrant workers, of mentally challenged people, of people who are transgender, of people who belong to the marginalized communities of women, women being the you know biggest marginalized community out there. And we are saying that this has to be recognized as a crime because two things. Um, first, if the lynching uh, is, um, let's just say if the lynching results in death, then who is actually responsible for the murder? I mean, in Mohsin Sheikh's case, the fact that people are out, of ba out on bail just means that, you know, no one killed him. That, who, who killed him then? There is no responsibility. The second case where murder does not take place. Let's just say someone is just assaulted or maimed. 
um, in that case what happens i mean you can get away with a not even an fir with a non cognizable report which doesn't even go to court which in most cases is you know it's just a formality it it never goes to court so such i mean and and this is happening at a large scale in the sense that the government has given a go ahead once and now even after narendra modi's uh, even the pms even after his statements these lynch mobs don't seem to come under control right because he has unleashed a monster and he can't put it back in the bottle now and so that is why it's really important for us to have a law at this moment because every single incident can be dismissed as being isolated and every single case of lynching can be dismissed as being one of assault so what is the constitutionality of this draft this draft is it's uh, the law that we have proposed it is completely it's consistent with uh, uh, the constitution because uh, see the constitution mandates the government it actually makes it compulsory for the government to protect the right to life mm -hmm. not just of every citizen but every human living in india and we've often seen attacks on africans we've often seen attacks on people from the northeast and if the state doesn't do anything it amounts to complicity on part of the state and that is why the the right to life is it's supreme it has to be guarded i mean even if someone has eaten beef even if someone has done something it needs to be guarded and you know it's um, uh, to give you a couple of examples as in um, why this law is not redundant because that's often the question that comes up um let's just say acid attacks acid attack was anyway i mean it was anyway punishable as assault right uh but why did we ask for a specific law against acid attacks because it happens according to a specific pattern so there's a person um, who will be you know th there'll be a um, there'll be a case of unrequited love there there'll be a jilted lover and uh, he will sort of have this ideology that you know if you can't be mine you can you can be no one else's right and that's why i'll sort of ruin you forever so that you can't sort of go out with um, anyone else so that you can't see anyone else or marry anyone else and that even as it was technically it was just assault but it had to be recognized as a specific crime because it happens so often and because there is a social ideology that backs it uh similarly i mean in pakistan what has happened uh, recently is they have brought a, a specific legislation against um on a killings so special laws are made so for example the sc st atrocities act for the longest time it has been i mean how effective it is how effective it's not a separate question but uh specific legislations to deal with specific crimes are so to give you another example uh, unrelated but uh, just to put an uh, analogy uh, let's just say someone uh, rapes a minor then they can already be charged under rape but why do we need a specific uh, why do we need it to be defined that rape against a minor carries additional penalties or it's a compounded crime so that's that's what it is and i mean you murder and assault may be crimes like that but lynching has to be recognized as a specific crime because it happens because of certain social ideologies you know because of a certain view that this is wrong or this is wrong or tomorrow i mean now it's not even beef now it's not even uh, pubs now it's just that your muslim identity i mean junaid's case muslim identity you can be lynched you know it wasn't even a case of beef that makes it even more horrible but there are provisions in the draft the to punish the government officials who don't prevent the lynching so see the the accountability of public officials is very important the accountability of police is very important um and to give to give you a different example but so, sort of in relation to making a point when farmers in mansoor were protesting the government did not blink mm -hmm. an eyelid before firing on them when people when students are protesting the government doesn't blink an eyelid before you know tear gas and i mean we saw what happened in punjab university they were attacked with tear gas and lathis and everything so if the police wants they can really control i mean no public lynching or riot mobs or lynch mobs can run amok without the knowledge of the government without without the knowledge of the local police the local police always knows whenever there is a build up and lynchings and riots do not happen without a build up there is often a build up often there will be a maha panchayat there will be a rumor there is a, i mean there is a structure of a riot there is a structure of a lynching all of these things happen there will be a whatsapp forward then people will be called to some place some sangeet som type person will come he will give some speech so it's a there is a build up and that has to be prevented by the police now we are saying that 
uh, had the police not been complicit or had the police not been sort of had the had the mobs not have the confidence ki police hamare saath hai i mean this was hap- this was said in many of the lynching cases that police hamare saath hai police is with us this happens due to various caste or community factors they think that the police is with them that means that the police at some level or the other is complicit and we have seen how this happened in gujarat i mean the model has been perfected over and over again you know not just in gujarat i mean in in the case of 1984 same thing happened the police i mean the, so many journalists have written that only if the police had acted in 1984 the you know the killings could have been stopped and that is why we are saying that the inquiry should be done by an independent judicial commission and not by the local police because if they couldn't prevent it or if they couldn't do anything to stop it how can we trust them to do a fair inquiry that's our um, sort of logic behind it so there are other provisions in the draft which uh, have like provisions to punish people who are the mind behind the lynching and not just the people who are on the ground lynching uh, the victims and also people who financially aid the lynchings so what was the purpose to include all this uh, often what happens is that uh, you know there are some masterminds who sit behind the you know comfort of their smartphone they can incite rumors against a certain person they can have all sorts of fake news and everything circulated over whatsapp over local whatsapp groups over mohalla whatsapp group rwa whatsapp group something and incite rumors against a specific person or a specific community uh this needs to be investigated now this is not a straightforward thing i mean this will this in every case will have to be investigated and it will only come up through investigation but uh those person i mean of course the punishment should be uh, proportionate we think that the courts have the wisdom to uh, sort of differentiate between who actually committed the murder and who was uh, responsible in a different way um but we think that uh, you know because right now there is no hate speech provision in the country and hate speech is often mistaken for blasphemy and we are not talking about blasphemy we are not talking about people who are disrespecting religion or disrespecting god so something that's not what we are talking about there are specific calls to violence that are made now in the case of say uh, gurmeher kaur i mean there's this bjp leader and i have put it out in a tweet who is on hoodings with narendra modi and everyone every big bjp leader and he says that gurmeher kaur should be raped like a like the victim in the 16 december case that's what he says uh and that 20 year old girl she now has to roam around with security mm-hmm. there is no hate speech law in the country right uh that's the problem so i mean that would require additional legislation but right now for the purposes of lynching the, as i said it has a structure and that structure needs to be recognized and no law right now does that so I mean that's why I mean it's not spontaneous our whole point is that it's not spontaneous you know you and I we don't just get together to kill someone unless someone has indoctrinated us to the point and made us believe that you know someone has to be killed or they deserve to be eliminated or they deserve to be raped so uh, were there any existing laws that you took inspiration from while drafting this yes uh, there is a uh, so first of all i mean the law was drafted by the drafting committee but yes we uh, when we sort of when we made the drafting committee we nominated the members of the drafting committee um we took inspiration from the us uh, anti lynching law and uh, that recognizes them and that, that specifically recognizes lynchings of uh blacks mm. and i mean that is what the scs three atrocities act was also about that specifically mentions uh, you know atrocities against dalits and tribals uh but uh, you know we are we are actually talking about a broader thing because um today anyone is vulnerable um no and it's not just today i mean people have been vulnerable for the longest time um we don't want to make it restricted to muslims dalits and tribals thank you so much for talking with us this is all the time we have for today keep watching us